Faith Alive with Ted Shuttlesworth is on the air. Join us from under one of America's great gospel tents as thousands come to hear a message of faith and victory. Watch as God's healing power touches them. You too can receive your miracle today. Hello, everybody. We're back. We had a storm go through that knocked out the power. We had to reset everything. So go ahead and share if you're watching. (laughs) (laughs) Daryl Pender said, take that, devil. (laughs) Exactly. We got it all back and running. And we're going to get this good message out tonight. Al LePage. Hello again. Hello, Brother Al. I love Brother Al. He's a wonderful brother. So is Daryl. We love all the people. Yes. Make sure you guys share because some people probably thought, what happened? <laughs> it took us a few minutes, but we were able to reboot. We're still working. I see the screen change the color blue to a lighter blue, but I can live with that as long as I can preach tonight. Yeah. So as uh, I see there on the restream, it says, let us know where you're watching from and share. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Jonathan, play. That Spirit of Faith song while we're waiting for people to come back on. Murray Shanu, praise God, Brother Brother Murray. Jose. All right, let's listen. There's a spirit of faith in the air. I can feel it right now everywhere. The Holy Ghost is moving. My future's improving. The spirit of faith in the air. Come on, help me say it. There's a spirit of faith. Feel it right. 
right now everywhere yeah the holy ghost is moving my future's improving a spirit of faith in you sound good come on say there's a spirit of faith in the air i can feel it right now everywhere My future's improving. <laughs> Let me just encourage you. Say, what do you do when the enemy tries to attack your mind? Look far under your feet. Far under your feet. Just say, the Holy Ghost is moving. My future's improving. The Holy Ghost is moving. My future's improving. The Holy Ghost is moving. all right I think she said that's your grandmother is that right she's got William and Mary on her shirt she must be a lawyer is that right he was slain in the spirit at eight I know God has a call oh yes the thing about it is he was hit by a car at age 15 got hit by a car in Norfolk Tidewater Oh, yeah, I know where that is, yeah. Special for him to be prayed for. Yes, ma'am. Now, just recently, he's been, he, he graduated with honors from Pratt Institute. You know where that, in Brooklyn, New York. He's almost a gen genius in his art. I believe it. Uh, he just was diagnosed, though, because of the, when he was hit with the tumor in his hip brain. You ready to get rid of it? And also schizophrenic, and when he... Well, that's the tumor. That's a different thing. I understand. Now he's related to you how again? That's what I thought you said. I wish I had a grandmother like you bring me to a preacher's tent all that way. How many hours is it? Two? Three. God bless you. He'll be all right. Now let me do what God called me to do. <laughs> Stand in front of me, son. When I'm done praying... You'll have no more schizophrenia. That's actually the tumor affecting the brain. Your eye will begin to open up. That'll be your sign that the Lord Jesus has touched you. You're going to have a great life. If God slayed you in the spirit, he didn't do it for fun. He has a purpose for you. When I was younger, Graham, you may remember Oral Roberts. Remember him? Oh, your mom went to ORU. His mother. And Oral prayed over his mom. No wonder that come up in my spirit. I didn't know any of that. Everybody look at your 
neighbor and say, look at Jesus. Satan is trying to put her eyes out now. Get, I love you. You're my new friend. <laughs> look at me, son. When I pray for you, which eye is the worst? This one, right? You ready? Oral Roberts personally told me, he said, when someone stands in front of you with some kind of a tumor or cancer, he said, pray this way and Jesus will heal them. That's how I'm going to pray. I didn't do this myself. The man of God told me how to do it. Everybody lift your hand. It works. We've had many testimonies of people healed of cancer and tumors. Will God touch this young man? Somebody shout it as well. Shout it as well. What's your first name? David. Say, it is well for David. All right. Play something, son. Everybody lift your hand. Not slow either. Victory song. How many feel victory for David? Hold the drum down. I want everybody to hear this prayer. Lord. I pray according to the Bible. I curse this tumor. Thou foul spirit of infirmity brought this brain cancer on him after the accident. We're believing you, Lord. I bind it. Everybody do this. Say, I bind it. I cast it out. I command it. Go into the deep. Report to your master Satan, you failed in your mission to destroy David. Now, Holy Spirit, I blow up this tumor. Come out of his brain now in Jesus' name. Go! Never come back. I open for the glory of God. Hallelujah! Look at me, David. You see my hand moving? Huh? He sees my hand moving. Couldn't do that before. You're doing it now. What's happening? It's opening. It's opening. Come on, God opens blind eyes. In this case, we had to destroy the cancer, the brain cancer. David, something's happening. Oh, look at his grandmother getting blessed. You ought to shout too. This is the opening night and God is opening the eyes of the blind. Sing something, son. Well, I got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. Hey. I got just what I wanted. Everybody got wave just at what him. I wanted. You see that? I got just what I wanted from the Look Lord. Look over here. He's well, seen you waving. How long had you lost the sight for, David? More than a year? Ten years. Ten years? You mean to tell me right now you're seeing? Come on, somebody shout. I thought it just happened. Cover this eye up, son. Cover it tight. Look at the preacher. You see my hand moving? Turn and face me. Take your other hand. Do what I do. Blind for ten years. Be quiet a minute. God's working on him. We'll talk to you in a minute, Grandma. Do what I do. Ten years, he said, I couldn't see. You're seeing now after ten years. Come on, say, I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. Oh, I got just what I wanted. got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire from the Lord. He's crying, oh, but there's tears of joy. After Holy 10 Ghost years, fire, God has healed Holy his eyes. You'd shout too. Come on, shout. Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, Holy Ghost and bless him, Lord. From the Lord. No more tumor. No oh, more cancer. Come on, while he's Holy praising Ghost God with tears. Holy Ghost and fire Come on, sing the it. Oh, Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. 
This is the power of God. How many know Jesus is under the tent? Go ahead, David, shout. Run if you want to. Go ahead, run. You ain't blind no more. Hey! Praise God. The blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. That was Christ's answer to the disciples of John. Are he, are you the one that is to come? That's the question. Are you the one that is to come? And the Bible says, uh, you might want to go to the wide shot. It's looking dark on that camera. We're still rebooting, but I'm not going to let the devil have uh, this service tonight. But they said, are you the one that is to come or should we look for another? And Jesus' unorthodox answer, Bonnie, was the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. And we preach the power of God to our nation. Uh, You've got some prayer requests. We're praying tonight. Whatever your greatest need is, type it in, whether you're on X or YouTube or Facebook. Type in what you're believing for. I feel the anointing. I can sense the devil doesn't like this, but even though he claims the prince and power of the air authority, we bind the devil tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. We release the anointing to yes. d- literally to build an opening over our heads and over the studios and over the communication devices yes. that you might be blessed by the power of Almighty God. Yes. Satan, you are bound in Christ's name. Yes. Lord, send your angels right now to get this gospel out tonight. Yes. With miracles, signs, and wonders, Sister uh, Bro- uh, Perez, stomach problems. Heal this person. Yes. Heal the back. Margaret's dad's back. Yes. We yes. release the anointing. Your son Jacob Stockton yes. will hear again in his left ear. Father, yes, I bind deafness in Jacob's left ear. Give him a new eardrum, new auditory nerve. Thou foul deaf spirit. Come out of Jacob's ear now, and may he receive his hearing back. Seven grandchildren, Lucinda, we're praying right now. Hallelujah. What do you have requested have come in uh, through the website? This is Joy. She's from India. She's watching. Um, She said her family is struggling without money to survive is difficult. So we're believing with them for great provision. And uh, this is uh, Brother Daryl. He's believing for financial freedom, and God's going to multiply all of his seeds sown. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Read it, dear. Come on. Let's believe God. I told the Lord to use me to help bring finances in, and I'll use the money to sow into this end-time harvest. Paula has multiple myeloma. I asked the Lord, your mother, to be healed, Paula. That's your request. Yes. Brother in love, Bobby had surgery on his nose, swelling, eyes, pain, back. God, touch Bobby tonight. Yes, Lord, Pastor amen. Naveed, yes. we agree in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lori Dean, welcome. Let, let us know where you're watching from. Yes. Share. We had a power outage. A storm went through, and um, we're believing God. Your mother in Jamaica, Rebecca. Lord, heal her from dementia yes. in Christ's name. Yes, well, f- honey, folks are coming back on, and uh, we just showed that powerful miracle. Yes. And tonight, Pamela, I'm going to show you how to have financial freedom yes. because, and he's from Atlanta, Peter Brown. God bless your son. Waterloo, Iowa is where uh, Lori Dean's from. Nathan Pimentel is up in Maine, I assume. Uh, your feet need to be healed, Naveed. I release the healing anointing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Trent says, I remember watching Brother Shuttlesworth on Friday. That was the old CTN network. We were on every Friday night. And also we were on uh, the church channel before it got sold. Uh, thank you. Yes, Chandler. Glory to God. Miss Tissini? Miss Tissini? Quebec. Quebec Justice. Forgive me. We had lunch with him, his mom and dad at a Cracker Barrel. Last summer, coming back from a crusade, watching from the United Kingdom. Well, welcome, Jonathan. We're glad that you're on. Yes. And we're believing God. I think I'm still on uh, uh, Faith UK. 
a network uh, covering actually 52 nations in Europe. From Pittsburgh, Sharon's on tonight, dear. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. What is in your spirit tonight? What did God give you before we left the house? I know you were looking at some scriptures yes, I, and I was reading, folks were believing uh, God tonight. Yes. Keep putting in your prayer requests, you that are watching. Keep sharing because we had that little attack. I believe that uh, it's sort of like we're all starting over. Amen. Amen. I was reading First Chronicles chapter 29. It's a wonderful chapter. You need to read it maybe later on after the broadcast. But um, it's where David and uh, is talking about they're building a temple for the Lord. Yes. And they start giving. Praise God. Just in today's uh, money, it would be about a, million, a billion dollars that David gave. Three billion. I just towards, did that when I was I'm That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and so you he's forgot. encouraging we the people. We have inflation <laughs> right now. <laughs> he's encouraging the people to give towards the temple. But he says, but who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer willingly? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Yes. So it's God's money, and we're giving it back to him. Irma, and healing for pain, left side of her neck. Touch you know, I was Lord. laughing about the increase in inflation. When my, my mother went to be with the Lord a few months ago, but she, she called me. She said, I need uh, some eggs. <laughs> I said, I'll go get them. So I went and. I got eggs for our house for her. And that was when the eggs jumped up uh, to like six dollars something a dozen. <laughs> so I went back. She said, "Let me pay you back." I said, "No, mom, I got it." Well, she said, uh, "How much could it have been?" And I said, "It was six dollars." She says, "Don't lie to me." <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Seizures due to a brain tumor. Uh, Ray, I pray for you. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Is my camera on? I pray for you, Ray, in the name of Jesus. I ask the Lord to heal you now in Christ's name. Yes. Christ's name. In the name you know what I think I'm going to do, John? I think we'll be okay. Uh, let's turn the back screen off. We had a storm go through, folks, but we've got enough uh, floor light to cover where we're sitting, and it'll be all right, and we'll have everything up and going by tomorrow. But come turn this back thing off because... Uh, uh, there's no sense running if it's not working right. But, Ray, I'm believing. And, folks, Amen. we're scrambling. Uh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Thank you, I Lord. feel the anointing, dear. Amen. The anointing. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Well, <clears throat> I want you, if you will, to, uh, I don't know if that is enough light. What do you think, John? We had that backlight. You folks, let us know in the comments. Is this good enough you can see? We just had a powerful storm go through, but we're not going to stop telecasting tonight. So if this is all right with you that are watching, we can open the iris on the cameras a little bit to give a little bit more light. But um, let me know. Is Carol this okay? Said we can see you. They said it it's says, fine. looks good. Diana Fry. Great. Just let them comment. Everybody, where you're at, uh, we had a storm go through, knocked the power out. We're back up. But sometimes this digital equipment has to reboot. But I'm going to preach tonight. I'm going to make the devil wish he'd have never brought any storm our way <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Yes, All right, everybody powerful. says it's fine. Your wife, Kay, Larry, we're believing for her healing in the name of Jesus. A brand new heart for Rain J. Lisa Booth says, I think it looks good. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Uh, justice. Uh, what did he say? Preferred the screen on. Well, good. God bless you. But <laughs> it, it, it uh, right now we're going to go with what we got, Justice. We got to fix it. But we'll have it back on tomorrow. Amen. Uh, he's a nice young guy. Michael, God bless you. He said, come on, amen. Sister needs healing from cancer. Father, Jesus. I bind cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. In his sister's body, we smite it. Remove it from her. Raise her back up in the name of Jesus and heal Mark's sister yes. from cancer. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I want to listen to my daughter sing that song, Oh, Love of God, before I bring the word to you tonight. I, hey, don't miss it. I'm going to show you tonight that some ministers and teachers and preachers have been lying to you about giving. I have the scriptures. I will back everything up, I say, with the word of God. 
but I don't want you to miss it. Honey, it's going to be good. I really believe it. I really believe it. Amen. In Jesus' yeah. name. Jesus' Praise name. God. Thank Pray you. for Pakistan and the Veed we are. We're on every yes. Sunday night at 9 o'clock in Lahore and on the whole network. Uh, uh, the fellow that owns it told me we have over 9 million homes watching now in Pakistan. Isn't that great? Yes. Amen. Well, this is our daughter, Megan, and we'll see. We'll be right back to talk with you. Amen. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and it reaches to the lowest hell the guilty pain knelt down with care God sent his son to
Praise God. Praise Isn't that God. wonderful? Amen. Uh, Thank you, Lord. While you're typing in your needs on the screen, my wife has some that we've already printed out. What do you have, dear? Uh, Monique said that she is believing for financial breakthrough and salvation for her family. Yes. Monique, we agree with and you. And Mark was believing for um, his sister, Mary, that has cancer. And we just prayed mm -hmm. for that. Yep. Yes. And uh, Mary said, Luella, my mother, healing in her heart and kidneys. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we command her to God. be made whole. Lord, touch those kidneys. Yes. Make her whole. Do it in, in her Jesus' body, name. Sharon what? said, Anthony and Erla, her brother and sister, to come back to the Lord. All right. Holy Ghost, draw them to well, yourself. While we're ministering tonight, if you have a, a, a special request, Something you're believing God in justice. You can see your screens back up. <laughs> we're doing the best we can. We had a storm go through, folks, and uh, but we're recovered from it. And I'm going to preach what I believe is going to be uh, a life-changing message for you. Mm. So don't miss this tonight because very rarely do I take time to speak on a subject such as I'm about to where it brings a little bit of correction to some of the false teaching and false preaching of the day we live in. Hello, Ted Melton. God bless you, buddy. And uh, we love every one of you. But what I want you to do, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, bring that up on the screen. Here's tonight's message. Five myths about giving. Now, let me say that again. Five myths about giving. And Bonnie, read that scripture as our introduction, please. Romans 13, 8. Owe no man anything but to love, one, to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Now, the Bible says that the destruction of the poor is their poverty. And then again, the Word of God says that the borrower becomes a servant to the lender. Literally, we have created, or shall I say recreated, slavery in America and around the world. These big, fat cat bankers, with their agenda for a one-world system, are beginning to use people like slaves. And the Bible spoke of that. And the other night, if you'll go back on my Revival app, which you can download for free, I dealt with which is greater, souls or money. And I used James chapter 5 to deal with how rich men that are evil will use gold and silver and all these things to put a heavy burden upon the working man. But the Bible says their gold, their silver, will become cankered. But I don't believe that that is inclusive of those who are being oppressed by these evil rich men that James 5 speaks about. Now, let me tell you why I say that. If you're a child of God and you love the Lord, and I, I know that you do, then you're living under what the Bible refers to as the blessing. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord, dear. Now, let, let, let people understand this with us. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. Yes. Adds no sorrow to it. So, if in the book of James, the fifth chapter, we see how that these evil rich people that it's all falling apart from them, but there's a second group in that passage in James 5. It's the working man. It's the laborers. And the Bible says their cry, honey, it gets into the ears of God. God hears their cry. Yes. God hears your cry. How many people tonight typed in as one of the requests, I need to be debt free. I need finance. If that's you, just type in debt free. If you say, I'm believing God, to take the yoke of debt off my life and my family, then as a point of contact in the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or X, 
Just type in the words, debt free. And God bless you, Brother Lighthouse Ministries. So we already have the foundation here. Put it back up again. My wife will read it. From Romans, what does the Bible say again, dear? Oh, no man anything but How to much? love. We don't own nothing, anything. Nothing. That means <laughs> debt free. Yes. But to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Read it again. Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Now, the people, you're typing in the words debt free. The first thing, before I get into the first myth, but in this introduction, we need to understand it's the devil that is the thief. Yes. John 10.10, 10, can you quote it, dear? The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and, and destroy. destroy. But, but I am come, I am Jesus come. said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the devil is seen as what? A thief and a and killer and a destroyer. And a destroyer. Isn't that wonderful? Now listen. Right. And I say this with all kindness. We've got no business letting the devil steal mm -hmm. our soul. I watched the other day. This was sad, hun. A very wealthy Hollywood personality said, I sold my soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. I wish I could get it back. Mm. I, I'd call him by name, but I, I don't have time for legal problems. <laughs> I'm going to preach. Let me tell you something. I, I pray God somehow let this message get to him. The devil cannot buy your soul. No. That's a lie. Yes. Not only debt-free, I'd type in the devil is a liar again like we did last night. Yes, he is. The devil can't buy your soul. You can't even sell your soul. The Bible says that Jesus bought us with a price, not with silver nor gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. We were redeemed at the cross. Then it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Why are we fasting and praying, dear? For God's will to be done. Miracles and um, people, people be being saved. set free. Yes. Salvation of souls. Healing. I feel tonight there's going to be a breakthrough for families. Not just Amen. finances, but fa whole families to get saved. Yes. I'm not pushing Hallelujah. my plate back these five days and fasting. Just because I don't have anything to do. I'm serious about seeing men and women and boys and girls set free yes. by the power of Almighty God. Amen. You don't have to put up with the devil's mess. He's a liar. Yes. And what else is he, dear? A thief. A thief. And a that destroyer. does what? Kills and destroys. And destroys. He's a destroyer. Yes. He's a destroyer, ladies yes, he and gentlemen. Is. Now, we've created slavery, recreated it, not only in America, around the world, and the new plantation masters are bankers. Hmm. Wow. I knew that would shock some of you. They don't care if you're black, white, Asian, First Nations. Bankers have an agenda. And it's not just about money, ladies and gentlemen, but the banking system has become integrated with the one world system and those that are pushing it. Mm -hmm. For example, the United Nations Agenda 2030, where they say, now listen to this. This is actually, you could read it for yourself. They say, in the days ahead, we want no one to own their own home, mm -hmm. no one to have their own transportation. Right. Basically, you're stuck on wherever they allow you to be or live. That's what they're saying. Did you know that there are large companies that are buying up homes for ridiculous prices so right. that people can't own them? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. Buying up homes but not releasing them to people, but blocking the ownership. Why? Part of Agenda 2030. 
-hmm. Now, forget all of that because I'm here tonight to represent my elder brother, Jesus. He's powerful. He's wonderful. He loves you. I believe I can show you how to be debt-free and not be a slave to those that lend to you. Yes. But I believe God will show you how not only to be debt-free, but to be powerful in this last hour yes. in getting the gospel out. Amen. See, Jody Hazlett knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Universal basic income. Right. Everybody's, this is what we'll give you. No, we're not going to be the slaves of the devil. We're not going to be the slaves of the United Nations or world government. And this is why they hate the church. Right. And this is why they're coming against the church. But what has happened is some, not I'm not going to say all or many, but some ministers have been lying to the people about what God's word says about money. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, if you'll stick with me, I'm going to show you five myths that are being taught from pulpits and on television and around the world. They're myths. They're not true. But if you can reject them and stick to the Bible, mm -hmm. you will become debt-free and blessed by God. Let's look at myth number one. Could we do that, Bonnie? Malachi 3. If eight. you just pay your tithes. God will bless you. How many yes. have heard that? Many of us have. Go mm -hmm. ahead. She's going to read something. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Two different gifts to God. Read it again. Let everybody get this. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes, tithes and offerings. and offerings. Look at me, folks. I'll tell you a story. Years ago, I was with Brother Shambach. We went to Rod Parsley's Dominion Camp meeting. As we drove up on the grounds, across the street on another person's property, there was a man with a big sign. And the sign said, The lie of the tithes. The lie of the tithes. Because he had something in his craw, as my dad would say, against Brother Parsley and what was going on at Dominion Camp I meeting. Of course, offerings were received and missionaries sent out. And Rod Parsley always has been very generous. He's not only been generous to others, he's been generous to you and me, honey. Yes, you remember he has. that time we were there and it looked like I might have to cancel a whole tent meeting because we didn't have the money. The Spirit of God came on Rod Parsley, and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord says that we're to give all of the tithe and offering today from World Harvest to Brother Shuttlesworth. Yes. Remember that? I do. And then he did it. And bless his heart, he saved a tent crusade. That tent crusade in Providence, Rhode Island, saw 1,000-plus salvations. And I told him, I said, I ask God to give you all of the reward from that meeting and the people at World Harvest. Because without him obeying God, obeying God. So, you know, some people try to build a fence around what we call tithing. But tithing is not enough. So this man, he doesn't even get past first base. He's got to sign up. The lie of the tithe. You know what Brother Parsley did? He had one of his guys go out and bring the guy a cooler with ice and cold water and drinks in it and make sure the guy had something to eat. So while the guy is protesting the offerings that were received at camp meeting, the tithing, the giving, hmm. Brother Parsley turned around and said, let's bless him. And it was over 100 degrees that day. Brother Shambach said, I hope the air conditioning's working. He meant when he went in to preach. Folks, this is a separator that needs to be dealt with. People have to understand tithing is not enough to bring the blessing. Bring that myth up again. Let, let, it, let it get in your spirit. If you just pay your tithes, God will bless you. All right, come back to us again. Now, Malachi said there's two kinds of offerings that must be given, the tithe and the offerings. 
The offerings being, of course, speaking about the free will offerings, and then later what was taught by the Jewish people, alms to the poor. Now concerning the giving to the poor, the Bible says, If you give to the poor, I will repay, saith the Lord. So we should have things in our life, uh, ministries, charities. We do this. We feed, help feed people. Isn't that right, dear? Yes. Um, name, uh, like uh, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Freed that Freedom called? Gathering we down in Florida. Them. They feed the, the homeless. And Candy Christmas, we've helped her. What mm -hmm. is that Under called? the Bridge. In Nashville, right? Yes. Um, in the, our tent the crusades. Out in Uganda. We bring truckloads of food. Yes. Thousands of families will be fed in the next few months in these great outdoor crusades. But you should have something. Uh, when I was younger, I wanted my kids to eat, so I found out a ministry that was feeding people. It was Lester Sumrall's ministry. And every month I cut a check, believing that if I sowed to feed the poor, that God would give me my money back to feed my kids. And the way my son was eating at the time, he was eating this out of house and home. But it works. It really does work. Amen. Secondly, the free will offerings. The free will offerings, Jesus mentions them, and not right now, but in a moment we'll read from Luke. But we just know that the free will offering is determined by the giver. Whatever you give, you determine that amount, that's mm -hmm. a free will offering. Yes. But the tithe is set. It's mm -hmm. 10%. Yes. Ted Cruz, bless your heart. They asked him on television, do you believe in tithing? He said, I try to give at least 1%. There's a book in the Bible, Ted, called Leviticus, around the 26th chapter. If you go there, sir, you'll find out the tithe is a tenth. Not 1%, 10%. Yes. So the first 10%. And mm -hmm. some of you, the reason you're having financial trouble you haven't even started mm -hmm. to get the curse off your finance. Right. You must tithe. Yes. You must tithe. I'll tell you another story. My wife and I were tithers. And, uh, Bonnie, you remember the time we were in Virginia Beach and we had no money? <laughs> and you were yes. making Tell the folks. She took the last of the food. What did you make? There was a little bit of hamburger left in the, in the freezer. And yep. I made a little meatloaf. And, and what'd you put in the middle of it? <laughs> it had broccoli and cheese in the middle. <laughs> she put broccoli. We had some old broccoli she boiled. <laughs> and some government cheese. Velveeta cheese or whatever it was. And then she, we went to get a little ketchup on the top of it. And there was hardly any left. So she put a little hot water in, swirled it around, <laughs> and microwaved it. And then put it on there and cooked it. And when it went in, it looked good. But when it came out, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can you see this? Oh, that's a, a signal I'm not trying to give. All right, it was about that big. It was pathetic. <laughs> so I said, let's pray. You remember? So we start praying. And I prayed for every missionary I knew. I prayed for everybody that we knew that was having physical problems. I just, sometimes when I get mad, like I felt tonight when the devil knocked the power off in the studio, I don't believe it was God. God wants this message out. God's got angels working now. We're getting it to you. We'll be all back tomorrow normal. But um, I was angry. Mm -hmm. It's all right to get mad. The Bible says be angry and sin not. How many of you have ever been angry when your money is tight or you're dealing with something physically? Type it in the comments. Say, I have. Come on, it's time for some truth here. Mm -hmm. You got angry because That's money right. got tight. That's right. Physical challenges. Mm -hmm. Just type it in. Say, I have. And uh, that way you're telling the truth. Right. You know, every miracle. Sure. Marie says, I have. Sure. Who else? It's altar call time. Janine <laughs> says, I have. Sean, I have. There you go. Carol, I have. Come on. Tell the truth. Spite the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Bonnie, have you? Dana yes. Lynn says, I have. Chandler says, I have. Who else? Be honest. Put the devil under your feet with this. <clears throat> this is how healing starts. This is how financial blessing starts, by admitting that there has been times that you've missed it. You know, See, Andrian, I have, I have, I have. I think that screen should fill up if everybody's telling the truth tonight. Sure we are. 
So here's the point. I had wondered, Lord, I have no money. Now, we were staying at my dad's home in Virginia Beach at the time. Dad had gone to California with my mother to dedicate a new church in California for Larry Joe Wright. All he said, take care of the house. Cold winter's coming. Keep the kerosene in the stoves. Make everything work. I didn't even have money for the kerosene. I was taking some of the wood, putting it in the fireplace at night, splitting it, and running a fire through the night just to keep the house warm. This is what I'm talking about. I couldn't even do what my father asked me to do. Well, while I'm praying, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to give you money tonight. I stopped praying because the phone rang. This is before uh, caller ID and all of that. I get up, I answer my dad's phone, and I think out of my spirit, I said, hello, Joe. He said, how'd you know it was me? Did my wife tell you I was going to call? I said, no, I just knew it was you. And I said, you've got $1,000 for me. Oh, he said she had to have called you. No, I just knew it in my spirit. And I said, look, I need it right now. I'll meet you down at the square. And I hung up on him and took off for the square. So when he showed up, he was driving a very nice car. Obviously, they were blessed, and thank God they were. But I didn't have anything. So he said, here's the check. I said, I need it right now. I took it. I said, I'll talk to you later. I jumped in my car and went straight to the bank, Dominion Bank in Virginia Beach. I deposited, but I kept out a few hundred dollars for groceries. I went over to, what was the name of that place? Um, was it Food Lion? Food Lion. Got the lion on the front of the building. I went into Food Lion. I took two shopping carts, two of them. Mm-hmm. I'm pushing them down the aisle. People are looking at me. But you see, I always believed in the double portion. I believe God would give me more than enough. And I started putting all the meats I could find, chickens, pork chops, steak, hamburger, even a turkey and a ham. And I filled that up with meat. The other one, I put in vegetables and bread and, and ch anything I could get. Went up and paid for it, cash. Went out and loaded bag after bag after bag into my... Uh, Ford, LTD, piece of junk, lifetime debt, that car. If you're a Ford man, sorry about that. Then I went across the street to the, uh, they called it Esso in those days, and I bought two 10 gallons of kerosene, filled my car up, went home. I said, Bonnie, put that little piece of meat loaf in the fridge. We'll eat it as a sandwich tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're going to eat tonight. Mm -hmm. She cooked up steaks, baked potatoes, a wonderful salad, green beans. I hope I'm making you hungry. Mm -hmm. And, honey, I'm on You're a making fast. Making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been eating. Uh, Lord, uh, fill us up. Amen. But uh, <laughs> wouldn't you know the night I use this as an example. But anyhow, <laughs> what I'm saying is God, <laughs> God did it. I sat down. I wrote out a check for the tithe, $100. And I started writing out a, a car payment check and insurance that was due. And the Lord said, where's your offering? So I wrote another check for $100. And that was when I began to understand tithing is not enough to bring the blessing. But I didn't know why at the time it was not enough. Later, all these years later, I understand. In a moment, I'm going to tell you why tithing is not enough to bring the blessing. But while I'm doing that, this comes up by the Spirit. I believe it's God. I want you to type in the comment the amount of your debt you want God to supernaturally cancel. Would you do that? And I'll join my faith with you. Bonnie and I, isn't that right, dear? Yes. But let's just become very practical right now and say this is how much. And if you don't want to put the amount, you can put home paid off or car paid off or, or, or whatever. But remember, tithing's not enough to bring the blessing. The first fruit offering is not the tithe. That's a different offering. We'll talk about that maybe another time. But thank you, Chandra, for saying that. She said, I want to understand what that is. The first fruit offering is completely different than the tithe. All right, Carl, about a quarter of a million, I'll believe with you. Autumn, your mortgage, one million. 
cars, motorcycles is watching. 40,000. 16,500. 16,500. 45,000. 49,000. Home, car, car paid off. Crystal, a quarter of a million. Wendy, uh, 16,000. Come on, type in what you're going to believe God. Because I believe there's a northern night. That's why I believe the storm went through. Because the devil probably sensed uh, that this was going to be powerful. Bonnie, mm -hmm. hospital insurance bills. Mm -hmm. Read them as they come up, dear. $60,000, Adrian said. Yes, sir. 15000 Joanne said. All right. And we're believing to release a debt-free anointing. Yes. A debt-free anointing. Come on, type it in. Wiss. Yeah. T. Wiss says 400000 All of it. Car, truck, credit cards. Ted. Let me help you, Brother Ted. Just get all the credit cards from your wife first. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Actually, uh, she's spending it all. She's a sweetie. Amen. <laughs> she's smart, actually, about finance. Home and LOC paid off. Yes. Somebody when? said st student debts. Yeah, 150000 yeah. Pam, we're with you. Chris, sell your house. At a profit. Amen. In Jesus' name. 5000 and home, home paid, paid off. off. Student, student loan. loan. Chandler, home, car. Rainy J, I'm ashamed. I have anger issues. That's a different problem. Amen. $1 million paid off. Justice, 30000 Home, car, credit card, all of it. Well, you yeah. type that in as an act of faith. Yes. Now, let me finish this. Tithing belongs to God, doesn't belong to you. Yes. That's what you owe the Lord. The Bible says, bring the tithe that God gives you. And God says, a tenth, Kim Palmer, 40000 a home. Uh, taxes, wow, Rex. Holton, Maine, they found you, 18000 <laughs> But here's the deal. Tithing, that's what belongs to God. But the free will offering mentioned there in uh, Malachi, that's what you give. Now, God doesn't multiply the tithe. Right. He multiplies the free will offering. Yes. The tithe already belongs to him. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Paul in 2 Corinthians dealt with God gives seed to the sower. Mm -hmm. And I've dealt with this many times. Three things happen when you give a free will offering. First, God will give you seed. He multiplies the seed sown, not what you keep, what you sow, multiplies it. He gives you bread to eat, provision. And then the Bible says he increases the fruits of your righteousness. So the blessing of multiplication is not in the tithe, right. but the blessing of multiplication is in the free will offering above the tithe. So when you hear a preacher, a pastor, a leader say, if you'll pay tithe, you'll be blessed. No, you have to do something in addition to the tithe, which is the free will offering. Yes. The tithe is the Lord's. It's not yours. It belongs to him. Yes, it does. But what Malachi seemed to indicate, if you don't pay tithe and the free will offering, you're robbing God. And may I just say, you're not only robbing God, you're robbing yourself of increased money and finance. The second myth, bring it up, Mr. Director, Bonnie, if you'd read it. We should not give to get. Read is the that second, again. The second myth is we should not give to get. Oh, how many times have I heard people say that? But what did Paul say? Here it is, 2 Corinthians 9. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now here a thought is introduced. You can sow the amount you want, sparingly or bountifully. This speaks of the free will offering because the tithe is already a set amount. It's 10%. But your blessing of increase and multiplication, and ladies and gentlemen, how you're going to get debt free is in what you sow above the tithe. Let me yes. say that again. The blessing for being debt free, having more than enough to give to every good work, it's not in the tithe, it's in the free will offering. 
And already we see something about the free will offering. You determine how much you're going to give, mm -hmm. sparingly or bountifully. God doesn't determine that. Well, since we know, according to Leviticus, the tenth is the Lord's, he's already determined what the tithe is. But here is the revelation God gave me. Mm -hmm. I determine, you yes. determine what you're going to give freely. Yes. That's why I can't stand these services where people say, who'll give a thousand? Who'll give a hundred? I think that's a bunch of junk, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. Because for somebody that could give 10,000 only gives a thousand, there's no faith in it. There's nothing to it. Right. But someone, let's say, that doesn't have a thousand but gives it, that's a greater sacrifice. Right. But the free will offering is determined by you. Mm -hmm. Type this in, if you will, as you're working with us through this teaching tonight. Type this in. I am blessed. I'm waiting while they do it. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you, Rene J. God will help you with your temper. My wife can tell you, I used to punch walls before <laughs> God delivered me yesterday. It was wonderful. We battle the flesh. Give, yeah. Give your spirit control. I'm blessed. Mark Donahue. Peter, I'm blessed. Jose, Lucinda, Dana, t -Wiss, I'm blessed. Now, see what we're doing. Justice, we're blessed. We're staying in agreement right now, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. we're yes. Staying. We're staying in agreement. Amen. And so the free will offering, you determine that, not God. You determine if you're going to give a little. You determine if you're going to give a lot. Mm -hmm. And so let that revelation from the Bible replace the myth. Look at it again, myth number two. Myth number two, we should not give to get. Stop it right there. Come back to the preacher. The only way you're going to get something is if you give. That's true. Second Corinthians 9 says he multiplies the seed. Sown. Sown. So you lying devils that have gotten into pulpits and have said that, and I've heard them say it. It aggravates me when I hear it. You don't give to get. You're a liar. The devil's a liar. Your father, the devil's a liar. You're a liar, and you're a phony preacher and you're a false prophet, and you're a false teacher, the Bible says you do give if you want to get something back. Yes. It's true. Praise God. I'm letting that sink in. <laughs> Let's move on. Myth number three. <laughs> Myth number three says money is evil. 1 Timothy 6.10 for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, how many times have I heard even the world say, see, it's, it's funny. The world knows all the scriptures about giving, but they don't know it right. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't want to mention his name. He's, I'm sure, a nice man, needs Christ, obviously. He said, why do preachers ask for something that's evil? Mm -hmm. See, he doesn't get it. Money's not evil. No. It's the love of money yes. that's evil. In the early days of my ministry, I preached a lot, and still do, in our urban centers, inner city. And it used to tick me off, hon. Mm-hmm. When I see the bishops driving the biggest, newest, fanciest cars. One bishop pulled up on the tent lot when I was with Brother Shamba. He drove up with a Rolls Royce. And then when he prayed in the meeting, Brother Shamba had him pray. We didn't really know him, but he came. He said, oh, my people stand up. My look, they stood up and they were very poor, didn't have proper clothing. And I thought, and there's maybe, I'd say, 200 of his people that were there. If he was teaching the Bible, his people would get blessed too. Right. You could have taken that Rolls Royce at the time that sold for over 200000 And those two or 300 people, you could have given each of them $1,000 for their home and their family. Because if you really believe in prosperity, it's not going to bankrupt God if you sell your Rolls. Are you hearing me? See, it's... Uh, it's a two-tiered system. 
that we've developed in the church, and I don't like it. Someone said, what kind of car do you have? I have a late model, what, four years old now, five years old. It's uh, XT5. Five. Five. It gets about 30 miles a gallon on trips. Around town, I'm getting about 22. I, 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 I very rarely drive it. I leave it parked. I only use it when I drive to Crusades. But why did I buy the best car I could buy at the time? Because plane fares were so expensive and my schedule was such, I would spend more money buying plane tickets for my wife and I than if I did just have a, a, a car payment of $500, $600. If she and I travel, and I travel almost every week at the time, it would be almost uh, $800 a week. It would have been $3,200 a month. Now, that's not going to bankrupt God. But the way I think, I like driving. I like looking over America as we drive, stop at a little out-of-the-way restaurant where it's real good food, just enjoy life, get in there, preach to people. And also our meetings go on one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I've even done an eight-week revival before. And so I, I, I just like living that way, and I believe I'm a good steward of what God gives me. Amen. So my wife and I years ago decided that we would – live as simply as we could. Not that we don't believe in God prospering us and blessing us. I do. But we said to each other, let's put the lion's share of the money that God gives us into the preaching of the gospel. And so what I did was I started buying time on radio. When Sometimes my wife will tell you, we'd eat at the same places traveling till she got sick of it. Mm -hmm. What is it you say about McDonald's mm -hmm. now, hon? I've eaten one million of those hamburgers. <laughs> one million of the one billion. I used to stop. You remember we used to stop at the Ponderosa Steakhouse. They had a deal in those days. 99 cents, you got a piece of chopped steak, fries, and a soda, and a really good roll. You remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. And I'd eat there every day, and she said, can't we get something different? <laughs> so I went to Burger King the next time. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, life does not consist of the abundance of things, the Bible says. Think True. about what I'm telling you. True. Now, we're blessed. I'm wearing a nice coat tonight, and uh, I have orange shorts on, but other than that, you can see the <laughs> coat's nice. No, no I'm kidding. Uh, my wife's nice. We, we, we don't go around bad-mouthing God's blessing. Right. But the balance is this. Those that feel for you to have money is an evil thing, they're wrong. Every pastor from the West Coast to the East Coast in this country and around the world that tells you it's wrong to have money, they don't read the Scripture properly. It says, it says, the love of money. Now, let me close this myth with this story. My wife and I were up in Maine. I saw George Thurlow on this week, Rex McLaughlin, Holton. We have a lot of people up in Maine watching, and God bless every one of you. Mark Dunphy, his family, all of these wonderful people from Maine. But Jose, Billy Joe. Um, I was preaching in uh, Auburn Lewiston, Maine, and they put me on the radio. And this was when Anita Bryant, who was sponsored by Tropicana, she did commercials for him for Orange Juice. She... Um, spoke against homosexuality. You may remember that. So they asked me on the radio in the interview what I thought, and uh, nothing wrong with my eye, Rex. These lights are bright. Sun if I put sunglasses on, Rex, would that be all right? <laughs> but uh, it isn't Rex nice. He's in Holton, if I remember right. But... Um, <clears throat> I, I just basically, I didn't badmouth homosexuality. I just said God loves people that are yes, he does. in these areas of needing of deliverance and help. So yeah. that night, a, a group, an activist group of homosexuals came to the service. <laughs> I'll never forget this. So a guy in an army coat, he said, I'm a homosexual. I said, wonderful. He said, I bet you wouldn't take this $5 from a gay man, I said, thank you. And I took it and put it in my pocket. He said, but I'm a homosexual. I said, sir, 
your money's not gay. You're gay. Mm -hmm. Now that I got it, this is not homosexual money. This is Holy Ghost money. Right. And then I brought him down to the front and gave him a front row seat. <laughs> I knew the pastor there wasn't too thrilled, but that's his problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. We love everybody. Yes. Whoever you speak against, you disqualify yourself to minister to. Mm -hmm. All sin is sin. All sin is sin and can be repented of and be forgiven. You can be washed in the blood yes, of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One of the reasons we're praying and fasting this week is for people to be delivered from sin. Yes. Your family can be saved. Yes. Your loved ones can be saved. Yes. In fact, during this segment right now, type in a name of a loved one or someone that needs to be saved. We're, we're printing these out. Honey, we've got all these prayer requests up here in the front. There's already a stack from the first two nights. Yes. We've obviously built another stack for tonight. I want to pray, lay my hands on these and pray for your family. I really do. Yeah. And so... Money's not evil. No. It's the love of it. Mm -hmm. Myth number four. Myth number four. The Lord knows my need and he'll take care of me. Now that's so spiritual. Mm -hmm. But Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you see, that statement as an overall statement doesn't sound bad. We just say, the Lord knows my need. He'll take care of me. And then people will quote uh, from Philippians. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, let's just stop a moment and examine that statement. I'll tell you why I believe it's a myth. Does the world need to be saved. Are there people in this world that need to be saved? Yes. If that is a yes, type that in. If I want to step you through this, Wendy's and Brandon, um, type this in. If you agree, the world needs to be saved. Your family needs to be saved. And you believe God knows that. If you believe with me, just type in yes. I just want to get some agreement for a minute. Yes. So I would say already the first seven, eight, nine, ten. Agree with us. God wants the world to be saved. Now, here's a scripture. He's willing that none should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should come to repentance. Well, if God knows people need to be saved and he's willing that none should perish, then why doesn't he just go ahead and save everybody right now and we'll all be in heaven in the morning? Answer that to yourself. If God knows the need, go back to the number four myth again. Lord knows my need. Come back to me. He knows the world needs to be saved and he'll take care of us. The myth says, why doesn't he just take care of all the unsaved tonight? And let's all meet up in heaven in the morning. Because just the fact that God has knowledge of your need is not enough to get that need met true there are conditions that on our end we have to fulfill mm -hmm. if god is going to do what he said yes. go back to hebrews eleven six. my life's verse read it dear but without faith is is impossible to please him uh-huh for he that cometh to god must believe that he is number one and that he is a rewarder number two of them that diligently seek number him. three you got to believe that God is, that he's a rewarder, and you got to diligently seek him. Yes. Of the 30,000 Bible promises, uh, scholars tell us these Bible promises God's put in his word. Two-thirds of them are conditional. <laughs> where God says, if you'll do this, mm -hmm. then I will fulfill that promise. Yes. And so it sounds spiritual. It sounds nice. God knows my need. He'll take care of me. But you see, there's something you have to do yes. to be debt free. There's something you have to do to be healed. Mm -hmm. There's something you have to do to see people saved. Even the Philippian jailer was told, if thou shalt believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to do something. Yes. You want your family saved? You believe. Mm -hmm. You be the first to say, I believe. Then 
thou shalt be saved, and thy household. Hello, Brother Carpenter. So one of the myths about giving is this. You've heard it said in churches, on television, by preachers. God knows my need, and he'll take care of me. I just explained to you why that's not really what the Bible says. Even in Philippians, where it says God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. When you read that first, here, turn, dear, to Philippians 4 while I'm in exhorting. Mm -hmm. I want you to get this. First, he was talking about an offering to the Philippian church. Yeah. And then he said, if you'll give, I want you to read it. Go down, Philippians chapter 4, right around verses 17, 18, 19. Listen to this. My wife. Did you see it? I'll read it. Hallelujah. Are right, you got it? All right, here we go. Now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, verse uh, 15, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody likes to quote verse 19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Everybody, you see where it is there? Yeah. Everybody likes to quote that. Mm -hmm. But what was the condition before that? Before God would meet your need, giving and receiving. Yes. Paul said, this promise, I can promise you, God will meet all your need. But first he said, you've got to learn how to give mm -hmm. and receive the free will offering, obviously. Yes. You got it? Go back to it again. Myth number four. Read it, dear. Myth number four. The Lord knows my need and he'll take care of me. But, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And you can stop right there. We determine. By faith, yes, our financial destiny. Thank you, John. John Lancer typed it in for us. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, verses, actually go back to 15, John, where it speaks about giving and receiving, and through verse 19, <laughs> the promise, when you give and receive. So, folks, we determine how much money we have by our giving. That's true. That's why I went through those first myths. Mm -hmm. Let's go through them again. We've got new people joining. I see the numbers jumping. Yes. John, number one, if you pay your tithes, God will bless you. No, it's tithe and offering. And the offering, free will offering, brings the blessing. Myth two, we should not give to get. Yes, we should. Second Corinthians 9. You have to sow to reap. Yes. The Bible says if you sow sparingly, you even determine how much your harvest will be. Mm -hmm. If you sow bountifully, you reap accordingly. Mm -hmm. You have to purpose in your heart. Let yourself give to God, yes. not grudgingly or of necessity. Myth number three, money is evil. No, it's the love of money that's mm -hmm. evil. And now we're at uh, myth number four. The Lord knows my need. He'll take care of me. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I say this with all respect for you. What if you've been sitting under teaching and preaching that preaches these myths. Years ago, in 1998, I saw these false teachings about giving coming through the body of Christ. I wrote this book over 20 plus years ago, Five Myths About Giving. Guess what? Things go in cycles. And now we have people teaching these false myths again in our churches. I've heard it taught in Assembly of God churches. I've heard it taught by Church of God people. I've even heard people out of what they call the Word of Faith camp say some of these myths. Independent, dependent, Church of God in Christ makes no difference. Our pulpits are where the truth of God should be dispensed. We should be giving people what does the Bible say. The last myth, number five. I want you to notice this. Read it, dear. Myth number five. Myth number five. Lord, bless those who give and those who can't give. Well, I've, I've heard our <laughs> ushers pray that over yes. the offering. Lord, bless those who give and those who can't give. Woo -hoo. Read the scripture. But Luke 6, what did Jesus say? Says, give 
and it shall be given unto you. It doesn't say those that don't give get the blessing. It says Jesus said give. Yes, those that give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know, <clears throat> mm-hmm. Lord, bless those that give and those that don't have to give. Those who don't have to give, the reason they're not blessed, they didn't give. Right. The multiplication comes, Jesus said, by the giving. Yes. One of the things, I got a lot of young preachers on, so I'm trying to uh, be nice. <laughs> Set a good example. But uh, I've had meetings where people come up and say, now, how do you want to do the offering? 50, 50, 60, 40? I said, just keep the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, we want you blessed. I said, look, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you're not going to get me to become double-minded over the finances that these precious people gave. Mm-hmm. I said, are you going to go up and tell them how much you're going to keep of it? I never went back and preached for those rascals ever again. Mm-hmm. Bunch of thieves. This is what I'm dealing with right now. Isn't that scripture speaking about fruit? No, it's not. <laughs> Justin, if you will, get Weiss Word Studies, get you a concordance, Young's Concordance. Yeah, I am correcting you. That's, that's correct. You are wrong. <laughs> the agrarian society of Jesus' day, they didn't carry the coins as much as you would and I today and, you know, debit cards, so forth. And so they used uh, corn, wheat, so forth, which Amos speaks of in the ninth chapter. In that part, you're right. But it's not just speaking about that because uh, alone. But Jesus later said uh, to the Pharisees, you tithe of the cumin, the anise, and so forth. He was speaking about spices and so forth. So in, in Christ's day, they used spices, uh, uh, precious spikenard oils and uh, things like that as a form of exchange for money. Some call it bartering nowadays. But it also spoke of giving because later Paul refers back to the free will offering that Jesus spoke of in Luke 4, Justin, when he says, when you give, he speaks of the giving of the church there in Corinthians as seed. Now, the word seed is only used two ways in the Bible, Justin. Mark 4, he gives... Uh, uh, the Bible says the word of God as a seed that falls on four kinds of ground. There, the seed is the word. But in 2 Corinthians 9, seed is finance or money that is to be given and to be tithed by the people. So when you interpret scripture, you must interpret scripture with scripture. Again, we're dealing with three offerings. The tithe, Leviticus 26, what Jesus said to the Pharisees, Concerning the tithe, this you ought to do. Alms to the poor, which God said he'd repay. And then, lastly, free will offering. In the Old Testament, it was seen in type by the wave offerings, the burnt offerings. And so, no, no, it's okay, Justin. I'm just, uh, it's just so much that I can't do it all tonight. But that's just glossing it over, son, that you can see it does apply to your money. Now, what was that last myth again? Put it back up one last time. Myth number five, Lord, bless those who give and those who can't give. Folks, that is a myth. Mm -hmm. God can't bless you unless you give. Yes. If you don't give, you don't get blessed. Right. If you don't give, there will be no financial harvest. Right. So our dear friends, Shanonathan, hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) God bless Jonathan. Hallelujah. Oh uh, but hear me. <laughs> he, it's a Chinese doctrine that Jonathan's <laughs> introducing to the body of Christ. Less talky, more hairy. But uh, <clears throat> let me just say this. <laughs> the reason why that you may not be prospering is because you failed to understand these three forms of offering. <laughs> Jonathan. He's cracking me up. That's my nephew. All right. So, yes, it's God's will for you to prosper. But, the, the, honey, you might have to pray in the spirit. Amen. 
But you are a part of God's plan of prosperity. It's true. There's a purpose to it. Yes. <laughs> Let me have that soda over there. I'm about to choke. Jonathan, I blame you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What is this? Pear, peach. Peach. I love peach soda. Amen. <laughs> Will you folks forgive me? We had a storm go through, knocked the power off. We're back again. I'm laying out the word. I love the people that's watching. Amen. I want you blessed. Yes. But many of you know, you don't hear this from many pulpits, but you're hearing it tonight. <laughs> and we've proved it to be true in our own lives, in our home, in our marriage, in our ministry. Give, and it shall be given unto you. <laughs> <laughs> Less talky, more hearing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. So these five myths, I've, I see them recycling again. When I wrote this book, Five Myths About Giving, it was 1998. I wrote it, published it in January of 99. This was coming out of a lot of pulpits. I don't know why, but it just was. Uh, that's a good question, Ryan. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the problem is I'm seeing these same myths recycled now, right now, 2024, and we cannot Give in to the devil's lies. Now, here's a question. It's not about the myths. Can the harvest also be determined, determined by the ministry you sow into? Well, it depends. Are you given to a man or are you given to God would be my first answer. If you're giving to God, then God sees that and judges it accordingly. But now let's talk about good ground. Let's talk about good ground. <laughs> yeah. I'll get you later, Brother Jonathan. Amen. Juddlesworth. <laughs> yes, I do believe that you have to sow into good ground, according to Mark 4, even the word of God, and there's nothing above God's word. It did the best in good ground. The other three kinds of ground had problems, but the good ground brought back multiplication and increasing for you. Are the phones down, Brother Ted? They could be. I have been in the studio since the storm went through. I don't know, Lisa Marie. God bless you. They may. I don't know. But uh, you can comment like you're doing now and get your requests in. We'll be back up tomorrow. We've already got some of our crew working on rebooting software. So thank you for asking. Uh, but, Bonnie, let's talk about good ground. I wouldn't want to give to a ministry where the man's involved in adultery or fornication or homosexuality. Right, right. I wouldn't want to give uh, to a ministry uh, where they're uh, running drugs, and I knew of a minister that did that and got put in prison. I think we need to pray yes. over the kind of ground we sow into. In fact, tonight, um, we've been believing God for our outdoor crusades coming up. And... Um, Last night, after two nights, how much money after last night was raised? Read that, dear. $38,598.50. Yeah, many of you people did that. Thank you for yes. that. Uh, I didn't set it a, a goal, actually. I, I'll take all the money you, you got because we're getting ready. Australia, is that where you're at, Rosewell? All right, I didn't know that. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, after camp meeting, Brian Rambler's on a great young evangelist, but uh, we're going to get back out under the tent and do these outdoor crusades. One of our partners, Daryl's helping us with the uh, the meeting on the uh, Ojibwe Reserve, First Nation Reserve in uh, Stony Point, Kettle Point. Yes. And basically, I had a preacher tell me this. I think it was Reinhard Bonnke. He said, I spend to save. I spend to save. I said, what do you mean, Brother Bunky? He said, I spend money to save souls. So could we all agree the best possible ground is to sow into a soul-winning ministry? What do you think about that? Yes, absolutely. My wife gives to other ministries, even though I'm the best one she knows. <laughs> but how do you determine your giving? <clears throat> your church? Yes. How do you determine the ground you sow into? I tithe into my home church, and then I sow offerings into other ministries that I, I feel are doing things that 
I'm happy about. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what we're seeing, last year when they typed up the number of souls reached in the three tent crusades, it was over 16,000 different Hallelujah. homes that we were able to affect. And I'm believing this year it'll be over 25,000 yes. and keep growing. Do you know in his best year, Oral Roberts had about 25,000 salvations in the tents a year. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. And even more. And I've talked to him before he went to heaven. Wonderful man of God. Dear son, daughter, Roberta, still going on strong. We love people. Amen. But really, yes, it's all about souls. I don't know. Are you still on Brian Rambler? I want to say this while I got Brian on. But um, I talked to Brian. Someone says they're contemplating suicide at this moment. Well, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind that spirit of suicide. Yes. I command you to be set free, you foul devil. Come out in the name of Jesus. Yes. And release our friend. Yes. Kayemba. In Jesus' name. Amen. Devil go. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you speak it. Say it out loud. I refuse to be depressed. I bind you, Satan. You got to talk to that devil. That's right. Brian Rambler, uh, Teddy told me this, and I won't say where or who. Brian went to a church where the guy took up like three or four offerings before he did something and gave to Brian. And I call them paper sack preachers. They'd always come to you with a little brown sack. Well, here's your offering. Praise the Lord. And the truth is, you can even preach in a place that's not good ground. So when I got back out on the tent fields, where the field is white with the harvest of souls, the anointing started coming on me like never before, like never before. And ladies and gentlemen, yeah, good ground. Let me show you uh, a giving ad. It'll be in my voice. I did the voiceover. I, I did this for TV. Watch this a moment and uh, play that giving ad, if you will, uh, Mr. Director. God is pouring out His Spirit right now on planet Earth. Souls are hanging in the balance. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus wants to use you today. I've been preaching Christ's saving and healing power through television in great outdoor meetings where miracles are taking place. We send out free gospel publications to multiply thousands, and our feeding program is touching people here at home and overseas as well. When you partner with me, I'm going to pray for you every single day. And I want to encourage you to become a soul winning partner with me. There are three ways that you can give. You see the information there on your screen. Prayerfully consider becoming a soul winning partner today. And when I hear from you, I will lay my hands upon your requests, your needs and pray. Together, we're going to make a difference. So, Bonnie, tonight, I believe we have a good ground ministry. We do. We don't carry debt. I actually we, sew into it. I know you do. <laughs> uh, and she sewed big time, I found out the other day. Yes, I did. All right, you get the dress. All right. But anyhow, <laughs> I want to challenge you to join with my wife and I tonight. We're receiving an offering all this week for these great outdoor crusades. Some of the places we have to send monies ahead of time to get everything, get the ball rolling, as my dad would say. But when we go, we see thousands of people saved, set free, healed. Ah, the blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the lame are walking. You determine. No man can do these miracles except God be with him, the scripture says. And so I want to challenge you tonight. Now, a lot of you said you want to be debt free. What if you gave an offering of faith against that debt? Kareem Lee, yes. What if you gave right now and say, you know what? I will give an offering of faith. Now, what is an offering of faith? It's when you give God something in the natural you can't afford to give. That is the true meaning of a free will offering. Because you determine how much you give. Second Corinthians 9 says you can give a little or you can give a lot, sparingly or bountifully. Right now, Bonnie, I want you to pray for all of our family, friends, and partners as we receive tonight this monies for these great outdoor crusades where many thousands will be saved.
Would you yes. pray for our friends and partners tonight? Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have promised as we give, we shall receive. And so we just pray that faith would come alive in the hearts of the people Hallelujah. right now, that they might know that you see every offering and you will multiply our seed sown. You will help us. This is your plan. This is your promise. And so we thank you today that people are giving by faith and they shall see their, uh, they'll be debt free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to encourage you right now to sow a special offering of faith. What we're doing, we're going into these urban centers and preaching the gospel. Yes, Irma, souls are hanging in the balance. That's right. And um, there's several ways you can give. We just played that giving ad. If you'd like to give on Facebook, you just type in hashtag donate and the amount. On YouTube or um, <clears throat> X, the quickest way to give is to go to our website. Mm -hmm. So first, I want to put up our website where you can give. It's Ted Shuttlesworth. Uh, dot com forward slash give and they're typing that in on restream i'm sure right now that's ted shuttlesworth dot com and i see it uh scrolling at the bottom of the sc screen you see it there dear yeah so there's how you can give there's many ways you can give through the website <coughs> through facebook they have a way there if you're on facebook cash app a lot of people are using cash app Thousands of dollars have come in this week through that cash app. In Canada, you Canadians that are on, you can give by going to our Canadian website, tedshuttlesworth.ca forward slash give. And so right now, I'm believing God. How many still want to be debt free? If that's you, then I want you to just type this in. I will give an offering of faith. Type that in right now. And if you want to put how much you're believing God to give, whatever the Lord just spoke to you when Bonnie was praying, type that in after you do it. Say, I will give an offering of faith of. And then what you do, you're locking in the blessing by making a covenant, by making a covenant with God for souls. So we'll just give you a moment. And while you're doing that, I want my daughter Megan to sing this beautiful song. O oh, love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star. And it reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair knelt down with care. God sent his son to Sure. 
saints and angels song could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean started releasing the ninefold blessing. Here's a fine young man, 22 years of age. Are you the mother? Yes, sir. She said he was born deaf. Suddenly, he started smiling at me. What happened? He's hearing. Yeah. Huh? All right. Yeah, he's got it. Well, he's going to go to church. Hold that. Now, turn this up, Seth. I want to show you. Look at me. When I clap, you clap. When you hear it, you clap. Ready? And you clap when you hear it. All right. He's just hearing for the first time. I had to give him a little instruction. Anybody raise any children? Is that right? I knew it in my spirit. The spirit of the Lord would say to you, get back into church. Serve God with all your heart that he may not only keep it, but that you can tell people how good God's been to your family. Is that all right? You have a beginning of a problem the Lord showed me in your eyes. I don't know if you wear contact lenses or not. Do you? But the Lord's going to heal your eyes, in particular your right eye. This eye here, even with lenses, it still gets a little blurry. Is that right? That's true. It's but, huh? It's a stig stigmatism. I've heard of that. In the name of Jesus. If Jesus can open the deaf ears of her grandson, he's 22, he can heal that eye. Oh, there it comes. 
Come on, someone say miracles are coming from heaven. Now watch this. Lord, I rebuke the spirit that kept him from speaking. In Jesus' name, you come out and never come back on him. Come out in Christ's name. Hallelujah. I felt that. You feel it? Hallelujah. All right. Say what I say. Bible. Huh? Bible. 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 Is that the first time he's heard since he's born? It is. And he's already saying Bible. Somebody shout Bible. Bible. Good. Mama. Papa. Oh, he said Papa. Isn't that like a kid? I'm going to say it again. Good. Mama. Papa. Now see, he's hearing for the first time. How many trained your little kids to speak? I'm, the reason I'm not laughing, I got a grandson. I said to him, say grandfather. He said, grandma. I went through this already today in my hotel room with my grandson. You hear me, don't you? Jesus did it. Amen. Come here, mama. Now I'll try again. He said, papa, but he's never heard anything. So he's learning, isn't it? You going to teach him when you get him home? He's 22. But it's going to be all right. Aren't you happy? Yes. Lift your hands. I see that the devil tried to put like an addiction or a problem on your life. Is that right? The Lord shows it to me. Everybody lift your hands. The blessing is working for families right now. I set you free just like your son got free and your mama got her eye touched. I set you free from every addiction. In the name of Jesus, the head of the church. Amen. Amen. That's pretty good, isn't it? Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Now, honey, you're going to have to teach him, just like when I taught my little children. That's my son. Did you know that preaching machine tonight? That's, he was born to me years ago. And I had to take him and teach him, and now you've got to do the same. But you're not sad about it. You're glad, aren't you? Very. Why? Because God's given your son back speech and hearing. Amen. Just one more time, just in case a Baptist snuck in and they don't believe. Amen. Bible. 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 Now this is what doctors would call a deaf mute. But suddenly he's hearing out of his ears, starting to speak. Look at the grandmother. Get a picture of her. She's so happy. She could be a model tonight. She's smiling so much. Mama, is it done? Now, I command angels to touch his ears and never come back, you devils. The angels of God protect his hearing and his speaking. In Jesus' name. Someone say, Jesus heals the deaf. Causes those that cannot speak to speak. And he's going to bless my children tonight. Come on, sing something as we do it. Miracles are mine. Miracles are mine. Miracles today are mine. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful, Bonnie? Oh, it is. And look, the new total people are giving, $46,973.50 to hold these kind of Praise crusades. God. Thank you, right God. outdoors in these urban centers. That was uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. And yes, praise God, Lisa Marie. Yes, hallelujah, Sharon. Amen. Marie, so wonderful. So keep giving Amen. tonight. I've uh, And go back and listen to this teaching when you get a chance. I know it's getting late on the uh, East Coast. Many of you are headed to bed. Uh, but Lucinda's sending offerings. It's still, you people are going to make this possible. In just a few weeks, we'll start on the Indian Reservation, the First Nations there. Then we go to Scranton, Pennsylvania. We're working on the Boston area, Springfield area. And then, of course, New England, Bangor, at the racetrack where the casino is. They're going to let us use where the horse race uh, track is to put the tent up. The Italian Indians are on our side. Amen. Amen. Well, we love everybody. Yes. And uh, thanks for sticking with us. We had a storm that went through earlier, and so we got knocked off, but we came back. I went a little extra long tonight, but you don't want to miss tomorrow night, Thursday night. I've got something that I believe will release to you a delivering power that will set your families free. 
in Jesus Amen. name. Hallelujah. And we don't care about Dolly Parton TV, <laughs> love spell, delete, <laughs> get rid of them in Jesus name. We're not playing the lottery. We're preaching the gospel. Amen. See you tomorrow night. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. God is pouring out his spirit right now on planet Earth. Souls are hanging in the balance. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus wants to use you today. I've been preaching Christ's saving and healing power through television in great outdoor meetings where miracles are taking place. We send out free gospel publications to multiply thousands, and our feeding program is touching people here at home and overseas as well. When you partner with me, I'm going to pray for you every single day, and I want to encourage you to become a soul-winning partner with me. There are three ways that you can give. You see the information there on your screen. Prayerfully consider becoming a soul-winning partner today. And when I hear from you, I will lay my hands upon your requests, your needs, and pray. Together, we're going to make a difference. You need to be healed tonight. He's only one prayer away. You need to be set free tonight. He's he only told one. you he's taking you through. Get ready. You're going all the way to the other side. You've got to come to the house of prayer and get the mind of the Lord so the Holy Spirit can speak to you and you can hear his word. You've got There's to no it. greater joy than God has used you to deliver the sick, set captives free, and plant a flag for Jesus. Oh. April 23rd through the 26th, Ted Shuttlesworth is coming to Fairmont, West Virginia for our 2024 West Virginia Camp Meeting at Calvary Temple. The church is located at 28 Calvary Lane. Come expecting your miracle. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Alive. We would like to hear from you today. Visit us online at tedshuttlesworth.com. You can also write Ted Shuttlesworth, P.O. Box 7, Farmington, West Virginia, 26571. Or call 1-888-323-2484. That's 1-888-323-2484.